Okay, something very strange in a series of companies in the gaming industry has happened. The person by the name of Jeff Strain, he's a former World of Warcraft lead, moved on from World of Warcraft or moved on from Blizzard to create a studio called Undead Labs, in which created the game's State of Decay. Those games and the, the lab were purchased by Microsoft. But this was all in the last little while, especially with the Microsoft merger or buyout of Activision Blizzard and then allegations of sexual misconducts at Blizzard continue to be rampant in what's going on. And then calls for unionization from Jeff Strain. So this is a detail that's going a few years right now. Now, Jeff has continued to move on, uh, making Pretana Media, which then made four other companies, Fang and Claw, Crop Circle Games, Possibility Space, and Dawson Entertainment. Those four companies, two of them have now shuttered this week alone, and the other two seem to be moving along with what they're calling a next generation AAA IP. Now, before we get fully into the article here, I've got lots to show. This this is a long uh, series of things I got to show. I'm going to try and kind of speed run it as best as I can, but subscribe to the channel. I'm covering things in the video game industry, what's going on, layoffs with the forced DEI. Maybe one day I can get back to making a video game guide, but at this point, that doesn't happen. Former Pretana CEO issues statement on crop circle closure says project was uninvestable. This I think is a sign of where things are going. People are now turning away from what we've seen in the last little bit with the diversity inclusion uh, equity mantra that has been being pushed into the games industry. Make the games you want to make, but don't try and shoehorn things into it that don't need to be there. Annie Dusley Strain, uh, which is wife to Jeff Strain, says current state of the industry was the main reason for shutdown and stands by these decisions. Former Pritana Media uh, CEO has issued a statement regarding the closure of Crop Circle Games. Strain's comments appear to be prompted by a forthcoming Kotaku article about the closure that she learned was to be published. In a post on the website, she explains the reasons behind the closure, noting the studio's unannounced project was uninvestable due to the current state of the industry. Now, on Mar as of March 22nd, 2024, Pritana Media Corp Crop Circle Games will cease operations and the game underway at the studio has been officially Cancel Crop Circle Games concept and execution did not find financial support for further development. Now, you got to remember the Gamers Development or Games Development Conference just ended a couple weeks ago, and this seems to be followed from that. It's a conference where a lot of game studios go to to find venture capital, to find more money for games that they're trying to produce. Uh, the, as the world destabilizes uh, in the most brutalizing ways, the game industry is experiencing a parallel uh, once in a multiple generation kind of change. We don't know exactly where it will land. It is awful on all sides. For now, like many other companies all over the world, we did incredibly painful and difficult things, including layoffs, to rapidly adapt to the new conditions to save every job we could and fight to bring innovative new game experiences to the market that favors the mega companies for independent developers of all sizes. There's no easy path forward. I stand by the decisions. As for Mr. Gok and his article for Kutaku, I have enormous compassion and sympathy for him. Kotaku is owned by Geo Media, which is in turn a private equity firm in Boston. As other Geo brands are sold and their teams fired, Mr. Gok must be under incredible pressure to generate clicks and satisfy advertisers. Watching the meltdown in games media has been just an awful and searing as experience the meltdown with the development jobs. I empathize with Mr. Gox's situation. These are 
extraordinarily stressful and ugly times throughout every faucet of the games industry. I hope the best for him and all of it, all of us in the industry as we grapple with new realities of the next phase in game development. So there's an effect being rippled across the board. The ripple has started. And now Possibility Space is another company under their umbrella. Uh, they've announced layoffs as of today or yesterday at this point. Um, so Possibility Space will staff layoff weeks after sibling studio Crop Circle officially shuts down. This is a very interesting revelation on what's going on here. There's been what seems to be several umbrella companies set up and now they're picking and choosing which one's going to survive and which one's not going to survive. Now let's start off here. State of Decay studio founder Jeff Strain starts a new studio possibility space. This was dated October 13th, 2021. Uh, the work from anywhere developer, oh, we've heard this before has big and ambitious goals in the resources to match. These companies that like to think that they can run a business at a work from anywhere situation, they fail. They do not survive. Look at the day before. They pushed this idea and then they became what seems to be a scam. And that is more what I'm starting to look at here. Jeff Strain, the founder of State of the Game uh, developer Undead Labs, who previously worked at ArenaNet and his original lead programmer on World of Warcraft, has started a new game studio in New Orleans called Possibility Space. The studio will be distributed team, meaning employees can work from anywhere, and the team aims to create a AAA game. Brand new studio going to make a AAA game right out of the gate. That means hundreds of millions of dollars are, are earmarked for them. But if they don't get that funding, then it's gone. What's left? There's nothing left. Uh, the phrase AAA has a lot of baggage in the development community strain clarified to IGN. It's not a phrase I like to use. It often implies lack of innovation. Marketing yourself as the next AAA company it kind of comes with the industry. The industry sits there and goes, okay, you're going to be the next AAA company. Maybe we invest in you. Maybe we throw some cash your way because you need the capital venture to be able to push this forward. If you look at the way they manage and deal with the studios uh, they've acquired over the past five years versus 10 years ago or 15 years ago, there's a profound difference. They do a good job acknowledging the diversity of development cultures in a strength and not a weakness. And they support the, and encourage to do the greatest degree that they can. It's just not that hard to treat people fairly and equally. I've learned that it's a, not enough to just have good intentions. It's not enough to have, wish for diversity, but you have to build structure that you adhere to in order to make it fair. We started at Possibility Space by making sure we cast a very broad net, looked at the wide, widest range of people we could and make sure we were getting fair representation at all levels of the company. This seems kind of uh, profane. Uh, Possibility Space and Crop Circle Games both shuttered their doors in the last month. Uh, and it sounds like the employees got no severance, got laid off on a moment's notice and they're done they're gone the employees are gone so what does this actually mean his statement here really does not age well here now there was an interview this is on wccf tech fang and claw q a triple a veterans brand to work on the next evolution of fantasy combat sports games. A few weeks ago, uh, former ArenaNet and Undead Labs co-founder Jeff Strain and Annie Strain announced Fang & Claw, a new AAA addition to Pritana Media portfolio of game development studios. Everything's AAA to these people. How is this so? How can you build four different companies, all of which are suddenly a AAA company? How does that actually work? Now, this interview is really telling what they are producing here. How did you come in contract with uh, Pratina Media? Uh, after I did the indie title, uh, I worked for Blizzard for a stretch on World of Warcraft, and then I started working with Wizards of the Coast. Then Jeff reached out at the beginning of the year, Wizards famously closed a studio 
right after I joined, which was a bummer, and Jeff gave me a call, and the timing worked out great because he had really interesting game concept for Chris Venturi, former animation director for ArenaNet and gameplay lead for Undead Labs. According to the press release, Fang and Claw will debut with a fantasy combat sports game, right? That is, that's the niche you have identified where the game, great, great game can be successful. Yeah, I think that's about right spot for it. I could give boring underpinnings of running correlations and stuff, but screw that. It's a genre I personally enjoyed a lot. I've played a large number of games in that genre. When you mention fantasy combat sports, we are talking something remotely like Rocket League, or would it be completely different? I understand it's very early days, but just to get an idea of what kind of game you got in mind. We're working to claw our own space. Rocket League has been fi fantastically successful and we have a ton of respect for Psionic. What are you talking about? So Rocket League is now a fantasy sports game or is it just a racing car soccer game? I don't really go with fantasy combat sport for Rocket League. I see it as you, you go fast and you try and put the ball in the net. It's soccer with cars. Um, Did you pick the engine for Claw and Fang? We're still doing engine evaluations. What? You're doing, you, you, okay, so you're not going with Unity, you're not going with Unreal Engine, the, the, there's no mention of what you're going to be doing there. So the answer to this question right now is no. In terms of platforms, are you targeting, uh, what are you targeting? Is it PC, consoles, or even mobile? Some games do everything these days with crossplay. I have to admit, I'd like to do everything, but we're going to keep it simple and start and really focus on PC and console more than anything else. So you have no clue. Absolutely no clue. Did you, did you already settle on a business model for you'll use for your debut game, Fang and Claw? Is it going to be free to play? Buy to play. We're down with any kind of rational or ethical business model. We'll examine that in some depth. Once again, you have no clue. Do you have a goal for many employees you're targeting to develop the game in production phase? We have some rough plans around that, although the game development is a flexible art. Once again, no. Is Fang and Claw going to be fully remote studio or do you have a headquarters? Pretana Media is to be set up fully remote overall. Now I'm trying to do my best here to shorten this down. I'm gonna cut this short. The questions that this company asked here was enough to award them $3 million from Venture Capital Transcend Fund on top of all that. So they just got funding back in September and now they're shutting two out of the four companies. The employees at those companies no longer got severance. They were just told to stay home. Uh, this all happened around the Game Developers Conference. It's really saddening and maddening to see this stuff. These other two companies that still are, are open have uh, statements on them talking about equity diversity and inclusion as well this is another situation where the dei of the model of the day seems to be the next part of games industry that's got to be navigated and t see what comes from it they've shut the doors of those other two companies because they thought they were in they they were ininvestable well, is that the ripples of what we are seeing right now in the industry? Does this matter? Is, is the industry going to turn around? Is this company, once Jeff Strain at Blizzard demanded that everyone unionize, he doesn't have unionization workers at his companies. He let them go, didn't treat them fairly, and just said, you guys are done. There's nothing left to the studio. There's no money for you, even though they just received $3 million in venture capital for Fang and Claw. I'm not sure where this stands right now, but there's a lot more to look at here. If you guys know of anything more, uh, I can only do so much here on my end, looking at one time or another. And if I continue going, this will be a 30 to 40 minute video, and I don't want to produce that much right now. Anyway, I'm your proud King Phoenix Sinner Shadow. I'm signing off here. Have yourselves a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you again very soon. <laughs>